What's up, everybody? Thanks, as always, for supporting the show. It would mean a lot to me if you would take a second to scroll down and hit that subscribe button to the Hoops Tonight YouTube channel, and then follow me on social media on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter so you guys don't miss any of our content over the course of this season. All right. Let's talk some basketball. One of the interesting things down the stretch of Bucks Blazers was leaning into switching. Both teams down the stretch leaning a lot into switching. The Bucks readily switching their smaller guards onto Jeremy Grant into screens. And then on the other end of the floor, one of the things that the Blazers were doing, they played this young wing named Tumani Kamara on Damian Lillard. He was doing a really good job just with his length and athleticism kind of containing there. And then what they would do is anytime they'd set a screen with Brooke Lopez or Giannis Antetokounmpo, you'd just see DeAndre Ayton or Jeremy Grant just switch on to Dame in a lot of those sequences. And so it turned into a lot of one-on-one basketball down the stretch, and it was like Jeremy Grant making you know tough shots over the top. Anthony Simons, the game winner that he had, that left-right Euro into the floater was ridiculous. And then on the other end of the floor, Dame kind of picking on those switches, had a really explosive dunk driving by DeAndre Ayton that was kind of encouraging. Like Again, I really do think a lot of Dame's struggles – Some of them come down to him and just his ability to make shots and how he's been struggling on that front. But a good chunk of it is, I think, rhythm and just kind of figuring out where his opportunities are to attack with that particular group. But it was kind of an interesting uh, Portland team because Portland kind of gets written off as one of the bad teams around the league, but they have a lot of talent. Like DeAndre Ayton can go into the post and he can get over to that left shoulder and he can make that hook shot over the top. You play off of Malcolm Brogdon when he's doing his between the legs dribbles, he can rise up and he can knock down that pull up three. Anthony Simons was like basically Dame's protege for a while and has added a lot of that high level shot making that Dame had. And he's a bigger, better athlete than Dame was. Like, they have a lot of firepower, and they can cause problems for teams. Jeremy Grant is a a good basketball player, and, like, like his shot-making, especially from three, has been kind of a revelation over the course of this last segment of his career. These are all really good basketball players, and they are a tough matchup, especially in Portland. And, you know, Milwaukee had a really ugly stretch there in the middle of the fourth quarter. Damian Lillard was just throwing the ball away. All over the place. Again, I want to give some credit to Tamani Kamara for just the job he did applying ball pressure and forcing him into a lot of those turnovers. Giannis ran somebody over and had a turnover, was missing free throws. It was just ugly as the Bucks went down by double digits. <clears throat> But they made some plays late. Portland was deliberately ignoring Brooke Lopez in help defense situations, which ended up becoming a theme at the very end of the game, which we'll get to in a few minutes. But Brooke hit a couple of big threes. Dame had that driving dunk against DeAndre Ayton to make it in a one-point game. And all of a sudden, it was a close basketball game. And then we get our final sequence. So it was 115-112. to 112. Dame comes off the ball screen, gets DeAndre Ayton on the switch, beats him off the dribble, rises up, throws it down. Again, a very encouraging play just for where Dame is at physically. Then they get a stop. They run a ball screen with Jeremy Grant on Anthony Simons. They switch. Or Anthony Simons sets a ball, uh, gets a ball screen from Jeremy Grant. Malik Beasley switches onto Jeremy Grant. They go to make the post entry into Jeremy Grant, and Malik Beasley does a really nice like kind of three-quarter front, gets around, and knocks the ball away and forces a steal. So then on the ensuing play on the sideline out of bounds... The Bucks run a wide pin down into a dribble handoff, which is also known as a zoom script, a zoom action, right? So imagine a, a, a Dame starting in the uh, in the corner, right? And imagine Chris Middleton inbounding the ball to Giannis, and as right after he inbounds, he runs down and sets a pin down for Dame, so that his defender is already navigating a screen before he gets into the dribble handoff. Dame comes off the dribble handoff, gets a little bit of airspace, rises up for three, and misses. After the miss, Portland gets the defensive rebound, but Giannis and Malik Beasley apply, apply some back uh, backcourt ball pressure onto Anthony Simons, and they force a steal. Next thing you know, Dame is throwing the ball up to Giannis at the basket for a dunk. <clears throat> All of a sudden, Portland's up by one. So from there, Portland goes down the floor, And they run a cleared ISO, just basically a 1-4 flat for Anthony Simons against Malik Beasley. He makes a a nice dribble move going to his left, a nasty left-right Euro step into that floater. Anthony Simons is one of the best floaters in the game. Uh, Really athletic play, too. Really impressive footwork. Makes a tough shot. So it's 116-115. So the Bucs go down the floor, and they run the exact same zoom action, but Doc Rivers makes a little bit of a tweak. Instead of having Chris Middleton 
as the guy who sets the pin down and Giannis with the dribble handoff. Instead, he has Giannis set the pin down and he has Brooke Lopez run the dribble handoff. Here's where that's interesting. Knowing before that, what we saw from the, the that middle to late portion of the fourth quarter, Portland was completely unconcerned with Brooke Lopez taking threes. Now, he did burn them. He made a couple but in that fourth quarter stretch, but we knew that Portland's game plan was to ignore Brooke Lopez, right? So what's interesting about that is the first time they ran the zoom action, it was Chris and Giannis, and Brooke was on the weak side. And so as a result, Dame, when he came off of the ball screen, had a little bit of space, didn't have a double team coming, right? When you run a ball screen, which a dribble handoff is effectively a ball screen, when you run a screen for the ball handler, where the screener is a guy the defense is not worried about shooting, you are inviting a double team. And so basically what ended up happening is Doc Rivers made a double team far easier for Portland to execute. Dame comes off the dribble handoff, and Brooke, uh, uh, basically uh, Malcolm Brogdon just completely ignores uh, 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 Brooke Lopez and double teams Dame. They throw the ball back to Brooke Lopez. He pump fakes, actually gets a pretty solid look, but he misses it. They have to foul. Portland goes down, they make two free throws. Then it was the second confusing decision from Doc Rivers. He has Damian Lillard inbound down three to Giannis. And I think there was like, what, five seconds left or so? And of course Portland immediately fouls Giannis. Now again, one of the things I saw going around on Twitter last night, that is a pet action for Milwaukee at the end of a game. What they'll do is they'll have Dame inbound to Giannis, Giannis will just basically hand it right back off to Dame so that he can get ahead of steam and a little bit of a ball screen type of thing in the backcourt to get going. They ran that exact same action against the Sacramento Kings when Dame hit his game winner. But there was a big difference. They were only down by two in that game against Sacramento. So the idea of fouling gets more convoluted, right? Because, you, yeah, you might... like. Giannis is a, a poor free throw shooter, but you're not just going to gift wrap him a chance to go to the line and tie the game, right? But down by three, where most teams are making a decision over whether or not they want to play defense or they want to foul, you are now making that decision for them. And so Portland immediately fouls Giannis. He goes down and misses both free throws, and the game is over. Now, for the record, because there's going to be there, I saw I saw it on Twitter last night. A lot of people going after Doc. That's not why they lost the game. You, you didn't lose the game because of those decisions at the end. But like, even with that weird kind of layout for the zoom action, Brooke Lopez still got a pretty damn good look, and he missed it, and he had just made two. So I, I feel like that's kind of playing the result, so to speak. If Brooke Lopez makes that, you call him a genius, right? Again, I would say whenever you got a guy that's going to be double teamed off of, I don't want him in a ball screen. I'd rather have him off the ball, so it's just a little bit easier to manage, but they still got a decent look. That's how it turned out, right? On the baseline out of bounds, again, don't like the configuration, but it was a one-point game after the Anthony Simons floater. I look back to like, how about Dame throwing the ball all over the court in the middle of the fourth quarter when he just was struggling with Portland's ball pressure. Just in general, some of the ways that Milwaukee's offense bogged down in the middle of that fourth quarter. So to me, in a 48-minute game, it's really silly to pretend like that's the reason why they lost. It's not the case. However, there just have been some questionable decisions from Doc in these first couple of games with him as the head coach. And mainly what I point to there, because what I talked about is when they hired Doc, I liked it because Adrian Griffin wasn't exactly some sort of tactical genius, but he was really struggling to motivate the group. The group did not believe in him. And so I thought Doc would be able to come in pull out some belief from that group and clean up the margins, get them better at the point of attack defensively, get them better in help and recover situations defensively, and specifically get them better in transition defense, sprinting back, getting matched up, and communicating things along those lines, right? I didn't think Doc was going to come in and just be some sort of schematic genius. That's not what he's known for, right? But here's the thing. Margin for error in the postseason is very small. This is something I talk about all the time. Like, if you really look back at these specific series and the way some of these uh, games have gone uh, over the course of, uh, of over the course of the playoffs in recent years, you can point to singular points where things swing, right? Like you look at like the Phoenix series. Phoenix tied that series, uh, the Phoenix Denver series. Phoenix tied that series at two. And in game two, they kind of had a lead there for a while, and it kind of slipped away late. Denver 
earned that win, but like you could see, it's like, okay, if game two goes differently, what if Phoenix takes a bigger lead? Maybe they have a better chance, right? The Lakers Warriors series in game four, it's like Lonnie Walker hits a bunch of tough pull up jump shots over Steph Curry, and Steph gets a couple of looks against Anthony Davis late. Now, well defended looks, but maybe those go in and, and the series looks different, right? Like the seven game series is going to more often than not put the best team forward. That's the design of a seven game series, but the margins are tight in a seven game series as well. And so in tight margins, you can't afford to make significant mistakes. And so between that end of game play, between some of the offensive layout stuff that I've pointed out, between that weird switch against Denver, we talked about they were switching and then scram switching against Denver down the stretch, and they had it configured nicely so that Giannis would end up on Jamal Murray and Brooke Lopez would end up on Nikola Jokic. But down the stretch, randomly, when they got it to a one-possession game, Doc switched it up and put Brooke on Jamal in the switch and he got cooked. And you're like, what? why? Why? Why did you switch that up, right? So, like, again, it's not a major concern. It's just something to keep an eye on because, like, the margin – Milwaukee's not going to sweep Boston. Milwaukee's not going to sweep some of the – you know, Miami or something like that. It's going to be tight, contested series. And, you it, like, those kinds of mistakes can swing games and can swing series. So it's just something worth keeping an eye on in the short term. One last thing I wanted to get to on the Bucks as well. Uh, it was not a good defensive game overall for Milwaukee and Portland, but in the fourth quarter, they were really good. They held them to an offensive rating below 90, a bunch of key stops. Specifically, once again, I thought Malik Beasley and Damian Lillard really turned up their defensive engagement down the stretch of that game. And for the record, it's been a theme this season, as you can see in the, the numbers for Milwaukee and their clutch defense. But there are some encouraging notes coming out of the early Doc Rivers situation in Milwaukee where you're seeing just better defensive engagement, at least in specific spots. And that could go a long way for this team and what their playoff potential is. So again, in a loss, still some encouraging stuff coming out of Milwaukee. 